Hey folks, this is Saiyan Chan. The title of today's episode, Will Too Many Passport Bros and Digital Nomads Make Colombia Unaffordable? I wanted to make this video in response to a comment I received from Chino X. He, he wrote, good analysis as always with charts to back it up. Looks like South America is the future, at least for me. Many men are coming to similar conclusions as Chino. Do you feel the trending movement of passport bros slash digital nomads and retiring abroad will make things less affordable or impossible for us aspiring retirees in the future? Or are there some inherent barriers slash difficulties in those countries that will prevent cost of living to rise? So I'm going to answer the question. This is also for the group of men which fall into this category, guys with no passports, have never traveled internationally, have no savings, no location in independent income such as rental, income, pension, social security, interest, remote job, online business, etc. And you're watching content from my channel, Passport Bros, other creators and thinking, man, I'm so behind. I'm, all these guys are, are traveling internationally, living in other countries, having a great time and I ha haven't even gotten started yet. I've never even set foot outside of my state what do I do? Or am I, am I behind? Do I just give up? The good, the new, good news is no, you should absolutely not give up because we are early and the opportunities are plenty. Point number two is only certain popular areas will become less affordable. One prominent example is Poblado neighborhood in Medellin, and that's where the majority of the gringos and the tourists and digital nomads flock to because it's the easiest. Uh, I, I say easy, not in terms of uh, expense or cost, but because it's already catered to tourists. There's a lot of English and it's very, very convenient. But as we discussed with Felix, who lives there, link in the description below to my uh, discussion with him, there are vast swaths of even Medellin that are completely untouched by gringos where you would have to hunt and look very, very hard to find one. Those places, uh, of which there are many, will only go up in price commensurate with the uh, inflation or the price adjustments of the local real estate marketplace and will be largely untouched by, uh, by gringos. And now we're only talking about one city, Medellin, in one entire country. I just started talking to people about Cali and even more of Cali is completely untouched com by gringos compared compared to Medellin. So for you guys worrying about just the whole country inflating and becoming unaffordable if, as it pertains to Colombia, no, that, that's not close to happening anytime soon. And if it does happen, it'll be as a result of a countrywide um, uh, change in the real estate market, just like we get like all of the USA becoming generally more unaffordable at once, okay? Point number three is uninflated prices can always be found. Even in Medellin, once you get out of the gringo areas, you can find uninflated prices. The example, the, the corollary, I guess, in... Uh, Cali, Colombia would be the San Antonio neighborhood, which is, which is full of hostels, full of tourists and, and digital nomads. But the moment you step outside this little neighborhood of San Antonio in, in the north, the further away you get away from there, starting as soon as five minutes away from that neighborhood by car, the amount of gringos just drops, I would say, exponentially so that you get to a point uh, where you're like 10, 15, 20 minutes away from that touristic neighborhood where there are no gringos whatsoever and the prices are completely normal by the standards of, of that city. So if that's your concern, uh, the only thing you have to be concerned about is the prices rising in the most popular areas and the immediate adjoining areas. If you're willing and able to step outside those areas, you're never going to have a problem at all. So don't worry about it. Point number four is passport bros slash digital nomads are uncommon. This 
the stuff I talk about on this channel and even Passport Bro channels, even though they, uh, they, uh, they blew up, while a lot of people might be consuming the content passively, the people that are actually going to try and uh, tr try to become a, a full-time digital nomad and live abroad long-term and are actually going to succeed at it over the long-term, these are few and far between. We're talking about very niche content and the people doing this being very uncommon. Okay. While you will always see tourists, which is common, uh, traveling, traveling all over the world, the people that actually move out of there and build a satisfying life long-term, living either full-time or uh, half-time in a different country, these are n not very, very common. So if you can make yourself a living situation that is outside of the immediate tourist areas, you're going to be completely fine. It's not, you're not going to have like half of the, the, the population of passport bro, potential passport bros in the US suddenly migrating over to the Com Colombia and the Philippines. Nope. Uh, the, the percentages are very small and I'm actually going to think about it and, and get some data and do some math to think about how much, what the upper limits, uh, of the male population becoming passport bros and digital nomads and expats could be, okay? The, 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 the overall percentage is low, under 10% as the maximum potential cap, okay, at best. And at, at that point, we're talking about 15 million people living abroad, okay? Point number five is become uncommon amongst uncommon people. This is a quote from David Goggins, and he, through his accomplishments, became uncommon even amongst the Navy SEALs, which they themselves are very uncommon uh, when it comes to, when it, uh, you know, compared to the average population. Well, if you're already going to do be uncommon and do uncommon stuff like becoming a password bro or digital nomad, then you might as well go even further and become even more uncommon after that. So the uncommon people are the digital nomads and the expats that get down to Medellin and are living in those gringo areas. Well, for you to become even more uncommon, adapt to the local culture, speak Spanish, and be able to move fluidly in the country of Colombia or the, the country of, of your choice and pick up a second language. That alone will make you uncommon amongst the uncommon people. And as a result of becoming uncommon amongst uncommon people, you will get even more uncommon results, uh, usually for, for the better. Why? Because you've put in the work and now you deserved it. deserve it. You earn it, okay? Uh, not trying to brag, but in, in my case, the reason why I consider the, the part of my life in Colombia extremely rich is because while my Spanish is, isn't anywhere near perfect, I put in the time to learn it to be able to be like, okay. And uh, years before I set foot in, in Colombia, I spent years learning uh, salsa and bachata and Latin dancing. So as when I when I arrived, it was a good match, a good fit for me with the amongst the, the people there, and I was able to really build a social circle that was uncommon when you um, when it comes to expats and and foreigners because I was able to move fluidly and have something to offer uh, to to their culture and add to theirs. Right, so be be become uncommon amongst uncommon people through skills, through education, through income. Point number six is the world is a very big place. The two foundational pieces of being able to live in this manner are remote income and Spanish. And together they open up all of Latin America and Spain. That That's a lot of countries, uh, a lot of cities, and a lot of places which you can look for to potentially make your home, which may be suitable to you as an individual, and we're not going to run out of space anytime soon, okay? You'll be able to find yourself the niche that is right for you in this enormous world with remote income and Spanish if you want to be able to 
stick to Latin America. And uh, yeah, excuse the red. Uh, I don't know why it's red. Let me change it here. Um, many. Finally, the last point I'll leave off with is many foreigners are NGMI. They're not gonna make it long term. One of the reasons for my work on this channel and my emphasis on remote income and, and Spanish and uh, social skills is to be is to maximize your chances of making it in Colombia and also the rest of Latin America long long term. See, uh, it, it's uncomfortable to talk about and I will never knock any man or anybody for trying to improve their situation, but I, I've seen too many people and and uh, it, I, I'd like to believe that my judge, I have a pretty good judge of how things are going to play out in the, in the future, right? Sometimes I'm wrong. It's never perfect. But generally, I'm, I feel that I'm more right than, than wrong. And what you will find when you go to Colombia is that a lot of the travelers there are very young. They're very inexperienced. They, they grew up in places that were... Uh, easier and not as hard or not as dangerous as Colombia. A lot of them don't have street smarts. And a lot of the younger people uh, throughout the world no longer have this kind of grit and uh, resilience and uh, resistance to the hardships on the world. And if they think that they're going to go to Colombia and life is just great and easy, all of a sudden they're in for a, a heart, like a rude awakening because it's not easy and most people wind up not staying because it's too hard too frustrating too annoying their savings ran out their their goal of creating an online business didn't didn't work out they they failed okay put it simply they failed and they just didn't make it they did not have what it takes it is what it is uh, they're they're just going to be folks that succeed and some that don't and, um, and some folks are what I would consider guys that are just looking for a cheat code. And the two biggest tells of this um, are, are guys who, who now, once they get to Colombia or a foreign country, have their identity tied up in that uh, city or country. So that if you say something negative about it, they feel that they're being attacked personally and... Um, and, 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 they, and they throw a hissy fit and, um, and b because they've tied their identity to it, they feel, they, it feels as if you are attacking them. The other type is, are, are those that feel that they're superior or that they get special treatment just because they are foreigners. So while their dollars and their euros may go, may go further, they didn't have any role to play in making it that way. They were they got lucky in the lottery of life to be born into a place uh, and an economic system that just happens to be uh, conducting, uh, conducting business in a currency that's stronger than the Colombian peso. So when they get here and they're still able to earn some dollars, they think they're special, they think they should get extra treatment from, from, from the women or that they're, they're special or that they're gringo, uh, no, I'm sorry. These guys, the majority of these guys with these attitudes, they also don't make it uh, long term because when it comes to doing above average things and succeeding at things that that would make them above average, they they haven't done anything more than just get a passport and get onto a plane and that's it. So that's why I emphasize to my guys to prepare beforehand, learn Spanish, get multiple remote forms of income if possible, get in shape, lear learn the language, and uh, take multiple trips if necessary, reconnaissance trip to, to learn about the, the, the place beforehand because preparation is, is necessary and it will greatly improve your, your chances of falling into the group of men that are definitely going to make it. D-G-M-I. All right? So with the un so closing it off and with the understanding that a lot of your foreign competition and other gringos that are down there are just not going to make it long term, you got nothing to worry about. So uh, folks, I hope this video has been interesting and informative. If any of you would like to 
support me and the work that I do, please consider doing so on Subscribestar or via Cash App or PayPal, links in the description below. If any of you folks need help with organizing your life or with planning a trip to Colombia and need some help, please email Saiyan Chan at protonmail.com to book a session with Saiyan Chan Life Coaching and Consulting. Everyone else, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. This is Saiyan Chan signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.